apreciadas amigas de la Alianza Cooperativa Internacional. Hoy, con este foro, estamos dando cierre a nuestra campaña que va en línea con la campaña de la ONU de cero tolerancia a la violencia contra las mujeres. Nosotras hoy hemos presentado y presentaremos una serie de videos, de acciones y de qué es lo que está haciendo cada una de nuestras organizaciones alrededor del mundo sobre cómo implementamos la no violencia contra las mujeres. Cuáles son las acciones que desde las entidades cooperativas estamos desarrollando para evitar que las mujeres seamos violentadas, que las mujeres seamos maltratadas, que las niñas tengan oportunidades y que tampoco sean maltratadas de ninguna manera. No podemos ser indiferentes a todo lo que pasa en nuestro entorno. Este tiempo de COVID-19 nos ha abocado al tema del confinamiento. En esas instancias de confinamiento hemos visto cómo las mujeres, las niñas y los niños están siendo maltratados, abusados y es, puestos en una situación de, eh, de violencia contra ellos. Las mujeres tenemos que tener solidaridad entre nosotras, tenemos que levantar nuestra voz, tenemos que tener la esperanza de que nuestras entidades cooperativas, más las acciones gubernamentales y judiciales que sean del caso, acompañen los procesos de protección para con las mujeres. En esta experiencia que vamos a ver hoy, vamos a encontrar los testimonios de las líderes mundiales, de las líderes de cada uno de nuestros continentes, donde van a presentar sus declaraciones, sus experiencias, sus motivaciones para no tolerar de ninguna manera la violencia contra las mujeres. ¿Qué es lo que estamos haciendo en las cooperativas? Es un interrogante que nos tenemos que plantear. ¿Qué acciones reales hacemos nosotras en nuestras entidades cooperativas para que ellas se sientan comprometidas a la cero tolerancia contra la violencia eh, para con las mujeres? Todos debemos de estar unidos, hombres y mujeres, para que hagamos un mundo en paz, para que esta época en la cual nos hemos tenido que ir al confinamiento, donde muchas de nosotras hemos perdido nuestros trabajos, donde tenemos problemas de salud, donde hemos perdido seres queridos, necesitaremos estar unidos y acompañarnos en esas acciones fundamentales para que efectivamente las mujeres tengamos una vida tranquila, de liderazgo y en paz. Yo los convoco y las convoco a todos ustedes para que realmente las acciones que desarrolla cada cooperativa sean visibles, visibilizadas, que tengamos la posibilidad de mostrar qué es lo que estamos haciendo. Porque si no mostramos que lo que hacemos va a ser muy difícil lograr un consenso y lograr acciones afirmativas en favor de las mujeres. Que la equidad de género no solo sea un discurso, sino que sea una realidad. Que la no violencia contra las mujeres no la tengamos que ser conmemorar en una fecha especial, sino que sea una acción de todos los días para que efectivamente podamos salir adelante como una humanidad, como un conjunto en una sociedad de hombres y mujeres que sabemos salir adelante, que sabemos eh, vivir en paz y que ejercemos la solidaridad de unos contra o, con otros. Por ello, invito a todos a que sigamos viendo este seminario y que realmente le saquemos el mayor de nuestros provechos. Muchas gracias y bienvenidos. Hi everyone, welcome, welcome and warm greetings from Brussels. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Andrea and on behalf of the ICA, I'm staffing the Gender Equality Committee. Today, I will be your host or facilitator. <laughs> Not so sure if those are the correct words. Uh, let's just say that I will be the one guiding you a bit through the different uh, videos that we have been receiving. Um, as you already know from the different communications you have been receiving, this is not a typical webinar. This is a pre-recorded one, which means that the different um, cooperatives representatives, they sent us their uh, interventions, their thoughts, their idea in video. And today I will be playing them uh, for you. Probably you're wondering, so what is the objective of this online session? Um, what we are trying to do today is to mark the ending of 
ICA and of course the Gender uh, Committee participation or actively participation in the 16 days of activism campaign organized by United Nations. Um, the campaign started on the 25th of November uh, on the International Day of uh, Elimination of Violence Against Women. And today's mo this year's motto was uh, hashtag Orange the World, uh, protect, fund, uh, prevent, and um, if I'm not mistaken, respond. If you'd like to know more about this campaign and how UN is um, organizing it and from where it comes, please uh, check on the chat box. Both my colleagues Leire and Georgia are there and for sure they're putting you all the links. At the same time, please, and if you did not do it yet, please do not hesitate to check uh, all ICA social media accounts, uh, Facebook and Twitter. There you'll have more information and you will see all this amazing content that we have been posting for these past 16 days um, where we are showcasing how cooperatives are at the forefront uh, of eliminating gender-based violence and on the forefront of women empowerment. On this being said, um, let's just start our journey around the world and seeing how the different regions of ICA, of different regions in general, what are they doing now and how they are focusing on eliminating gender-based violence and why for them gender equality is important. So our first step is going to be in Africa. From there, we have uh, Professor Estelle Gicheru. She's the chair of research and gender committee of ICA Africa, and she will kindly let us know what the African cooperative movement is doing and, and what kind of initiatives are actually needed in order to uh, empower women. Greetings to all of you. My name is Professor Esther Gichelo. Uh, I work at the Cooperative University of Kenya as the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of finance planning and administration. In other capacities, I am currently the chairperson of the Gender Equality Committee of ICA Africa. And uh, by extension, I also serve in the Global Gender Equality Committee. For this particular time, I just wanted to share about uh, how we have handled matters related to COVID-19 in our country, and especially in the cooperative sector. Since the cooperative and the COVID-19 um, came about, uh, one of the things that we have seen is uh, many, we had seen changes in many areas. For example, we had lockdowns in our country, we had shutdowns, and uh, because of that, people were forced to stay at home. Schools were closed, so both children and the adults were living at home, something that was was a bit new to them because they were not used to this. As a result of that, we also experienced a lot of violence, uh, gender-based violence. So through cooperatives, we have been trying to mitigate against some of these factors. And uh, some of the things that we have done in the cooperatives is to identify those women who came up with the request uh, for their loans to be, their only payments period to be adjusted and the cooperatives were able to give them loan holidays so that they could distribute and be able uh, to take up loans to help their, their families. We were also able to, uh, because of the unemployment that uh, came about and uh, cooperatives were also suffering, uh, we were able also to create some centers uh, where women could call when they were uh, when they, they were they were they were abused by their other family members, we have also been able to organize empowerment programs for women, especially the women leaders, to build their capacity uh, as leaders or in the cooperative movement, uh, because we have seen women are very resilient uh, compared even with their men counterparts when it comes to leadership, and they have their un own unique way of looking at things and uh, because of this we have uh, encouraged them uh, to 
participate more in the leadership through capacity building programs. Uh, for example, on the 14th of um, October, we had one forum in Nairobi uh, where we invited all the women from the cooperatives uh, to participate in a leadership development program where we identified the kind of problems women are going through during this uh, pandemic period and uh, how cooperatives can be involved to sort out uh, those kind of problems. So it has, uh, it is quite a very uh, involving work and uh, we hope through cooperatives, through any support that we can get from out there, we can come up with programs to support uh, these women because when you support a woman, you support a, a whole family because a, a women, uh, when they get supported, they don't use whatever resources you provide to them on their own. They use them for their families. So I want to thank you very much and uh, to say that uh, this is a journey that we should work, work together. We should work together uh, to help our women. Thank you very much. From Africa, uh, let's go a bit further and we will go to Asia Pacific. Uh, in Asia Pacific, we have Dr. Nandini Asad. She's the chair of ICA Asia Pacific Women's Committee, and she will let us know not only what women in Asia Pacific are facing nowadays, but also who are the best allies uh, when we are talking about women empowerment and gender equality. to us is not a women's issue. It has to be owned by the community, indeed by the nation at large. For us, from the women's moment, it was a historic occasion when young men at the village level, shoulder to shoulder, began the long campaign for women's rights. Young men from low-income communities are combating violence against women at the household and community level. It is a unique methodology through which future male citizens are being transformed into promoters of social and economic rights of women. A project of its kind at the grassroots policy level. The great success of the project in a short period has been largely due to the youth forums being trained in street theatre and fusion imagery which has emerged as a low-cost, effective tool for mobilizing and creating awareness in low-income communities through mass campaigns. They have learned about gender, patriarchy and different forms of gender-based violence, solving cases, referrals on legal matters, or with panchayats, teachers and police. Train parents change the gender equation at the household level. Train the teachers as well as make the changes in the curricula in the schools, in the way teachers treat girls and boys as students, and in the way male students look at girl students or parents invest on young girls. Freedom from gender violence will come when we together as allies will walk together making it a community agenda on the long march to gender equality. Not only are their perceptions changing, they are also taking action at the community level to create awareness regarding women's rights and to stop gender-based violence. Many of them, earlier Eve Deezers themselves, are now stopping verbal harassment of girls at bus stops and other public places. They are counselling their friends against Eve Deezing. The project has created a powerful alliance between young male advocates for gender equity 
and women microfinance groups at the local level. With this model has innovated a new product, gender-based violence linked to microfinance. A most effective connection leading to sustainable solutions for women's social and economic empowerment. To mainstream gender issues will be heartened to note the new role of young men as allies in fighting the many manifestations of gender-based violence at the grassroots, not the theoretical level anymore. May I now invite young and old men as re-socialized citizens to walk with us, to work with us towards our common vision of a gender equitable world. From Asia Pacific, I will take you even a bit further and we'll arrive to Americas. Uh, in the region of Americas, we have Ms. Yomara Nunez de Cespedes, who is the chair of uh, IC Americas Gender Committee. And she will kindly inform us what happened uh, now in this COVID-19 times and how are women suffering the consequences of a global pandemic? Este 25 de noviembre nos encuentra en un confinamiento obligatorio para todo el mundo, que además de necesario para contener la pandemia del COVID-19, ha resultado una revelación increíble de las desigualdades y el maltrato que sufren las mujeres y las niñas al interior de sus hogares. Lejos de constituir un espacio seguro, la cuarentena ha demostrado los peligros que representan para las mujeres y las niñas el vivir atrapadas con su agresor. El disparo de los abusos y el feminicidio deja de manifiesto que teníamos una pandemia más cruel como lo es la violencia contra la mujer. Contener la violencia intrafamiliar se suma a la larga lista de pendientes que tienen las autoridades y la sociedad en este estado de emergencia. Es mandatorio disponer de todos los recursos que estén al alcance de las instituciones para proteger de manera real y efectiva a tantas víctimas sobrevivientes de la violencia intrafamiliar. Es necesario adoptar medidas de protección para la mujer trabajadora. Todos y todas debemos sumergirnos en una campaña permanente para generar un cambio en los comportamientos machistas que hacen peligrar la integridad de las mujeres y las niñas. Hacer que la sociedad civil se involucre de manera efectiva en la denuncia y la educación sobre la prevención del maltrato y visualice las estadísticas de tan horrendo flagelo a través de datos actualizados. Ahora nos toca, desde el Comité Regional de Equidad de Género de Cooperativa de las Américas, cerrar filas y actuar para que ninguna mujer o niña sea dejada atrás. Dios nos ayude. From Americas, eh, we'll come back a bit where I am. We'll come back to Europe. Eh, from Europe, we have Ms. Stefania Marconi. She is the chair of Cooperative Europe Gender Equality Group. And she will share with us a bit what kind uh, of initiatives we are taking place in Europe in order to ensure uh, the elimination of uh, gender-based violence and to let us know also as a cooperative movement what should we do in order to achieve gender equality. Cooperatives are committed and united under the International Cooperative Alliance to fight against any form of violence not only on the 15th of November, but all the year and since many years. As the United Nations remind us, the pandemic of violence against the women is not new. Even before the COVID-19, globally, 243 million women and girls were abused. The COVID-19 pandemic simply intensified the violence with support services ample and accessing help became harder for women. Cooperatives all over the world are providing victims of violence with safe shelter, counseling and supporting services, access to job opportunities, helping women to get them power and gain again self-esteem and confidence in the future. In Europe, the cooperatives organization under the speeches of Cooperatives Europe decided we can't not wait 
60 years to close the gender gap and approve the Charter of Commitments made of 10 goals, all interrelated and with a strong focus to fight against any form of gender imbalance as well as any form of gender violence. The International Alliance Gender Equality Committee joined the 2020 UN Generation Equality Campaign Orange the World, a call to action to bridge the funding gap, ensure essential services for survivors of violence, focusing on prevention and collections of data. Fund, respond, prevent and collect should be a must. Each of us, women and men cooperators at local and national level, we can make the difference. All together, we can change the state of the play in the world for millions of women and girls. We call our members to sharing the best practice and example throughout the year to strengthen their commitment to stop also the gender violence pandemic. This is the best way to celebrate the 21st of November, tributing a live homage to the three Mirabel sisters that on the 25th of November 1960 were abused and killed, as well as it will be a way to show concrete support to victims of violence throughout the world nowadays. Thank you so much. For our next video, we are still staying in Europe. Uh, we actually received a message from the president and co-president of the Italian Alliance Women and Equality Commission, uh, Ms. Anna Manca and Ms. Annalisa Cassino. Gender violence, the one we consider in its more glowing appearance, is the most evident and dramatic component of an enormous iceberg, hiding more subtle kinds of violence, not affecting only physical safety, but the entire aspects of woman life, undermining her economic and social autonomy and blocking her full realization as a person as a citizen in every respect. During the period of lockdown, we were worried for the signal we were receiving of increasing domestic violence as a consequence of forced coexistence among victims, victims and executioner. Therefore, we contacted some of the main Italian cooperatives dialing with the reception services protection and job placement of women victims of violence. The picture we obtain has been dramatic. Share information and collect the data on this phenomenon is the first and fundamental act to counter it. As movement animated by the value of uh, cooperation, we work together to build an inclusive and non-stereotyped culture convinced that this is the key to tackling gender-based violence. Now, through our journey, let's see a bit what International Cooperative Alliance uh, has been doing these past years uh, in order to tackle gender-based violence and to ensure that gender equality is the forefront of the cooperative movement. With us, we have uh, Mr. Bruno Rolands. He is the Director General of ICA. Good day to all of you. The International Cooperative Alliance fully supports the 16 days of activities against gender-based violence organized by the United Nations under this year's global theme, Orange the World. It's absolutely obvious to us in the cooperative movement that we have to combat gender-based violence under all its forms. Let's remember that cooperatives were pioneers in granting democratic rights to women under the cooperative principle, one person, one vote. 
Another cooperative principle enshrined in the IC statement on the cooperative identity is that of voluntary and open membership, which stipulates that cooperatives are voluntary organizations open to all persons able to use their services and willing to accept the responsibilities of membership without gender, social, racial, or religious discrimination. So it is explicitly mentioned in our operational principles that there shouldn't be any gender-based discrimination, let alone violence, of course. Several decades ago already, the International Cooperative Alliance established its Gender Equality Committee. This committee has done and is doing a lot to promote gender equality in the cooperative movement globally, including against the fight against gender-based violence. So within such context, gender-based violence is obviously unacceptable to the cooperative movement. In 2018, during our General Assembly in Buenos Aires, the cooperative movement approved a declaration on decent work and against harassment, condemning any type of violence and harassment in the world of work, and committing itself to the ILO labor standards. The declaration, among others, prohibits within its sphere of influence all sexual harassment, and it declares zero tolerance on violence at the workplace. A few months later, in June 2019, the IC participated to the 108th session of the International Labour Conference in Geneva. At that occasion, we publicly expressed our support to the incoming ILO Convention 190 and Recommendation 206 on eliminating violence and harassment in the world of work. This is a key milestone in labour standards and in women's rights. It's the first time we have a binding instrument providing a concrete framework on how to effectively prevent, address and remedy violence and harassment in the world, in the world of work, including gender-based violence and harassment. In October 2019, the ICA General Assembly in Kigali, Rwanda, approved a declaration on positive peace through cooperatives. This is very relevant because the opposite of peace in the sense of positive peace is not war, but violence. And that includes also gender-based violence. So positive peace is a remedy against violence and gender-based violence. Cooperatives create a dynamic that per se favors positive peace and therefore limits violence, including gender-based violence. At the same General Assembly last year, the IC approved a new 10-year strategic plan with a full section around the promotion of gender equality within which the fight against gender-based violence also has its place. Ending gender-based violence is not an easy task. It will be very difficult. We are uh, struggling against something which is based on thousands of years of habits in human society. But the cooperative movement has the strong will to play its part in addressing the issue in a systemic fashion, in partnership with intergovernmental organizations, governments, trade unions, employees organizations, and all relevant civil society organizations. This pandemic will have been a magnifying glass on so many issues, including gender-based violence. And the post-pandemic period will probably be one in which many issues will be reconsidered, including that of combating gender-based violence. And the cooperative movement will contribute to this endeavor in this post-pandemic period. Thank you very much for your attention. For our next stop, let's go again to Asia Pacific. Uh, from Asia Pacific, we have Ms. Rema Naravati. She's the executive director of Self-Employed Women's Association as most of you may know it as SEWA, and she will kindly let us know uh, what, how much this pandemic has impacted uh, in employment uh, in women. Greetings, namaste. I applaud Orange the World, ICA's campaign on violence against women. We at SEWA organize the women workers in the informal economy. Today, we have about 1.9 million women workers as the members of SEVA. SEVA believes in the joint action of union and cooperatives, struggle and development. As a union, we organize the women workers to build their collective strength. 
organize women's own cooperatives, collectives, social enterprises and federations to increase their bargaining power, create alternative employment opportunities. Seva's almost five decades of experience shows that when women have economic security, work and income security, she is able to live a life of dignity and self-respect. She is no longer vulnerable, a victim of violence. When she has asset in her own name, she is also more safe. The pandemic of COVID-19 has directly destroyed the lives and livelihoods of the informal sector women workers. Men have also lost work. There is anxiety of old debt, whether they will find new work, will they avail new loans, will they have money to fulfill their needs and addictions. The frustration is thrown out on women and girls. They have become victims of more violence. Work is a healer. Seva's experience has shown that when there is work in the family, there is less violence. Therefore, Seva has initiated making of masks, making of dry snacks, training women in bakery and confectionery, organized an enterprise by linking the cooperatives of vegetable growers and vegetable vendors and providing vegetables and fruits into the containment zones through e-rickshaws. This has brought dignity and self-respect. Therefore, I salute and wish all success to Orange World ICS campaign on violence against women. Thank you. And finally, I think we are at the end of our journey. Before going to the closing remarks, uh, remarks that they will be delivered by Ms. Maria Eugenia Perezea, who is the chair of the ICA Gender Committee, I would like to take a bit of time to thank you so much for being here, to thank uh, all the panelists and all the cooperative representatives that they have been sending us videos. And definitely, last but not least, I would like to take the time to thank my colleagues, uh, my colleagues in the communication side, uh, Laura and Leire, that have been putting together all this amazing content for you to have on social media, to have on um, Twitter, Facebook, and all this logo and the visuals. And on the policy side, my colleague Georgia, who is always making sure that gender equality is a high level of high importance in the um, advocacy agenda of the cooperative movement. On this being said, uh, I will let you with the closing remarks. And once again, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully, I will see you very soon. And please stay tuned uh, for 2021. Uh, on behalf of the Gender um, Equality Committee, I just have to let you know that a lot of activities are coming and we'll be really grateful to have you with us in our next journey. Thank you so much and have a really nice day. Queridos amigos, hemos llegado ya al final de lo que ha sido este seminario. Les agradezco su permanencia, su compañía, su solidaridad, para que hayamos compartido y recibido los mensajes de los diferentes continentes, de las diferentes líderes de nuestras organizaciones, donde nos han enseñado cuáles son aquellas acciones afirmativas de visibilización de qué es lo que estamos haciendo en el mundo cooperativo en nuestras empresas para evitar la violencia contra las mujeres. Espero que esta experiencia se comparta y podamos reproducirla en muchos otros eventos y que no sea solo el primero de nuestros seminarios, sino que se vengan otras acciones parecidas a estas donde hagamos una apuesta en común entre todos los que ya estuvimos y los que nos estaban oyendo y escuchando para que efectivamente visibilicemos esas acciones que son tantas y tan variadas, pequeñas o grandes, pero que evitan la violencia contra las mujeres. Que tengamos una Navidad feliz, quiero dar ese mensaje final, una Navidad feliz, una Navidad en paz, una Navidad en familia y que todos, todos nos cuidemos mucho. Que tengan una feliz Navidad y un próspero año 2021.